Sonic's had it rough for years. After his golden era on the Sega Genesis, Sega's had a hard time finding their footing with the blue fur mascot. He's had something of a renaissance in 2010 though, starting with the better than expected Sonic All-Stars Racing earlier this year and Sonic 4 Episode 1 last month. And now, with Sonic Colors, Sega has saved what might be the best for last. The first truly modern feeling Sonic game. Sonic Colors was released at the tail end of 2010 as a Nintendo Wii exclusive and was the first Sonic game in a long time to receive widespread critical praise. After years of games ranging from okay to unplayable, was Sonic Colors really the game to buck the trend? Yes. Yes it was. Sonic Colors is simply one of the best looking Wii games of the year. Full of vivid color, super detailed backgrounds, and excellent animation, it's also the best Sonic has ever looked. More impressive than Sonic Color's presentation, though, is the evolution seen in its gameplay. Sonic Color starts by establishing better physics that lend themselves to much tighter, more precise control. The game isn't just homing attacks and holding forward anymore. Sonic Colors does an excellent job of mixing together the crazy spectacle we've grown used to with some really well-designed platforming that surprisingly evokes some of Sonic's well-known competition. More importantly though, the cast of characters has been greatly reduced, refocusing attention primarily on Sonic and Tails. Like other major platformers this generation, you'll need to finish every stage in each world in order to progress there. You're gonna have to suck it up and deal with the frustration, and there are points where the game just isn't fun anymore. This is really too bad, because otherwise, Sonic Colors has some of the best replay value of any game in the series. As you gain access to new Wisp abilities later in the game, you can go back to earlier levels and use them to find entirely new paths. Sonic Colors is a dizzying combination of the distantly familiar memories you have of the first few Sonic games, combined with thoughtful level design and excellently implemented new power-up abilities. It's one of the biggest surprises of the year. As a blueprint for the future of Sonic, Colors delivers and then some. Sonic Colors is a great game, one of the best in the whole franchise. The gameplay is strong, the Wisps add a nice change of pace to the game without coming off as super gimmicky like the Werehog or Shadow's Guns. The stages are expertly designed, the music is amazing, the graphics are beautiful, the new voice cast is great, the humor and story are refreshing, it's an all around great game. Is it safe to say Sonic is good again? Seems like the last two years have seen numerous fun titles starring the Hedgehog. It's almost enough to make you forget about Werehogs and that time Sonic tried LARPing. He's like the Mickey Rourke of video games. Sure, it looked like he was totally dead for a while, but now he's back and we're ready to love him again. Sega is trying to merge the old with the new in Sonic Generations. The end result is a game that finally rekindles what Sonic was all about and delivers his best game in over a decade. From an entire magazine dedicated to the game, comic books, and peppering the internet with all those cool little CG trailers, people were excited. To seal the deal, the game involves modern Sonic teaming up with his younger self, Classic Sonic, looking just as pudgy as he did in the Genesis days. The entire game is an homage to the franchise, full of in-jokes, familiar locales, and characters. I don't want to spoil the story too much, but if you ever thought, I wish my Sonic game had 100% more Tails the Fox in it, then you're in luck. This newfound sense of humor only draws you further into the experience. I'm a freebie! 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 Wee! Every now and then there's a cutscene where the group encounters the time meter for about three seconds and then we find ourselves headed to the next level. The plot is incredibly underplayed, and for an anniversary title, it's extremely underwhelming. In fact, it feels completely unfinished and rushed. The story may be lacking, the rest of the game more than makes up for it. I was so psyched to see the elemental shields finally return, and to my delight, they all work exactly like they did in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Rather than giving you an annoying hub world with boring activities or sticking to old-fashioned automatic level advancement, Generations provides you with a virtual playground filled with plenty of side attractions. Though you still need to progress in a linear fashion to advance to new levels, the structure affords you more variety if you wish to break off from the main objectives. The old-school platforming and the more modern, almost racing game levels fit together nicely. You'll fight familiar bosses and rivals like Perfect Chaos and Metal Sonic. They're fun, but they feel a bit lackluster compared to boss battles of the past and the overall epicness of the game. Modern Sonic's levels are actually jam-packed with multiple pathways and lots of 3D platforming sections. I'm serious, it's amazing what kind of routes Modern Sonic can explore to reach the goal ring. Take Chemical Plant for example. You might think the other curves are just part of the background, but no, you can actually jump on them and discover hidden pathways or hidden goodies. Level design like this is constant throughout the entire game for both classic and modern Sonic. Generations does a fantastic job of capturing the sense of speed you associate with Sonic. The completely remade levels are some of the best looking in the series, even though they're going off existing templates. Sega finally appears to have learned from its mistakes. Sonic Generations' thoughtful mishmash of the Hedgehog's distinct incarnations delivers the best of both worlds. 
Though it's a bit on the short side, the fundamentals are undeniably well executed. Sonic hasn't been this good in years. Surprise! The levels are great, the action is mostly tight, and the nostalgia is at its max. Sonic Generation certainly does well in celebrating everything that made Sonic good. It may not be perfect, but damn it, I would be lying if I said this wasn't the best Sonic game since his adventures in the 90s. It's short, but very replayable. The classic Sonic sections are a lot of fun, especially with power-ups, and the modern Sonic sections are some of the best 3D levels in Sonic history. The game definitely runs on nostalgia fuel, and it's a perfect example of a game playing it safe. It's lacking very much in the originality department, but in terms of just being a great game, Sonic Generation certainly does that very well. And to me, I think that's most important. 9.0 out of 10. The story may be a lot down, but with awesome recreations of classic stages, music that really brings the house down, and replayability to keep things going, the game as a whole really isn't affected by lack of plot. If you're a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, make sure to add this to your collection. Hey Sonic! Enjoy your future! It's gonna be great! This game as a whole has been accused of a lot of things. Ripping off Mario, ripping off classic Sonic for the sake of nostalgia, you name it. Sonic Colors, Generations, and even Sonic 4 showed that the series still had promise. But when Sonic Lost World was announced in May of 2013, fans were excited to see a follow-up to Sonic Generations. Sonic Lost World overtly covets the great Italian plumber, but in doing so, it smothers the talents of its blazing blue hedgehog. I'm just saying, such an inept story. I was talking about insincere drama earlier, and this game makes colors, generations, and even forces look like The Last of Us. The tone in Lost World is so all over the map that I couldn't even draw one. Seriously, the game at times takes itself so disgustingly seriously, and it's laughable with the awful English acting and cheesy as all get out script. Then there are more antics when we talk about mass genocide and Tails almost getting himself killed! It's like, what the hell? Is this story supposed to be serious or not? It's a short game with a minimal amount of cutscenes, but with scenes like Amy dying, I feel like it is. But then our villains are completely stupid and nobody takes them seriously. They even turn Tails into a robot and you think he's finally gonna do something for once in the meta era, but literally he doesn't do anything and the armor's just gone in the next scene as Sonic takes a nap in the ending like none of it ever happened. Sonic is just entirely unlikable this time around and quite frankly he's an idiot. And honestly the whole Deadly Six thing, they're not that special either. They purely exist just as a means to be stopped, and as characters, they are just so bland. From the offset, you have characters marketed in a similar vein to Infinite, but these guys, the Deadly Six, they could never work. They were never gonna work, since they just look ridiculous. So our villains are made into cheap jokes, but the jokes aren't funny, so they just don't work. Even characters that aren't jokes are just so bland, like the old guy. What's his personality? What's the personality? What's the joke? What is it funny? He's old and teaches stuff. Hell if I know what it is. The girl likes nail art and says, Call me. For what reason? I'm sorry, but if you want me to laugh, you're gonna have to establish context as to why these throwaway stereotypes are funny. It says something about your half-drama, half-comedy hybrid that I was cringing through every joke and died laughing at every single attempt at drama. The first thing I noticed going into Lost World was Sonic himself. He's got his spin dash back, the figure eight animation is back, and all of his character animations are so bouncy and cartoony, I love it. So Sonic has now moved heavily away from a focus of speed to a more traditional platforming style. Sonic Colors tried to do this too, but kept the consistent gameplay style from Sonic Unleashed. Lost World kind of feels like it has the same philosophy, but a newly designed playstyle to fit that philosophy. Because Color used the boost gameplay style, it had a balance between puzzle platforming and speed, but they were clearly distinct. Sonic Lost World doesn't know what it's trying to do. The only way you're really going to figure out how to use parkour to begin with is via experimentation, because again, the game doesn't really tell you how it works. The only time I got an idea from the game itself was when I was already running up a wall to begin with, and even then, the hit itself was rather vague. It was by complete accident that I found out that Sonic could hop left or right when running on a wall to turn corners or climb horizontally. 
Not even collecting 100 rings grants you additional lives anymore. Making sequences when you're rewarded with a fuckload of rings feel completely unfulfilling. Collecting all the red rings pretty much requires mastery of the game's parkour system, complete with a ton of do or die situations, which always does a great job in infuriating me. I hate situations where I only have one shot of getting a specific red ring, or else I'm going to have to die to try again, or restart the entire level in the case of Frozen Factory Act 2, and especially Lava Mountain Act 2. The 3D segments are just as slow and reliant on solving simple puzzles as the 2D segments are, like pushing fruit into a blender. Many levels have a theme or a gimmick, some of which work, and others are just as bland as the rest of the game, like pushing fruit into a blender. The ones that don't work are infinitely frustrating, and the ones that do copy it from somewhere else. The level designs can actually be pretty good, and I really do like this whole new idea of making these tube-based layouts, but holy crap, all of this is made much, much worse due to the piss-poor level gimmicks. In one word, my entire experience could be summed up with frustrating, which is hilarious to me because the first two worlds were actually really fun. Visually, Sonic Lost World is still striking. First, the game runs at a constant 60 frames per second, something absent in the Boost trilogy. The game's high-definition graphics are also terrific, though the game is not rendered at a full 1080p, which is a shame considering Nintendo was able to achieve this on the hardware. Sonic Lost World is a beautiful game. The audio is great as well. The opening music in Windy Hill is really exceptional. The instruments chosen are super clean and vibrant, like the visual. I really have no complaints whatsoever. While not the best soundtrack in the series, falling somewhat short of the truly epic soundtracks in Sonic Adventure or Sonic 06, everything here is seriously high quality. Sonic Lost World's world is one that relies too heavily on past games, but instead of innovating on top of it, it created a generic version of the Sonic universe. There's familiar areas like Green Hill Zone and a casino, but after that, you have beach, forest, lava, snow, and clouds. There are memorable and unique moments sprinkled throughout the game, but they are far and few between. Oh, and hey, look at that! From Sonic Colors, the Wisps are back too, with some new friends. For absolutely no reason pertaining to the story, there they are. And all of them but the laser, drill, and hover require use of the gamepad's tilting or touchscreen. You can use the touchscreen for the drill and laser, but funnily enough, they don't tell you that you can use the analog sticks for those. Huh, fancy that. And yeah, this is gonna be a bit of an additional rant, but I didn't really like these either. They are the definition of tacked on. Like Sonic Lost World comes out, a game which isn't exciting, you don't want to replay it. So the game forces you to. When I first played this game, I had some criticisms that I didn't find to hold true anymore. I thought that the game didn't have enough focus and tried to be too many things, but now I see that it really didn't try to be anything. It wanted to try something new with the parkour system, but didn't utilize it in the right game. It wanted to surprise Sonic fans, but the method of doing that was to create an experience that stripped Sonic of Sonic. Even the final boss went as far as to be pretty much a copy and paste job from Sonic Colors. I will go ahead and give the game this, it does have a lot of variety for a Sonic game. For the most part, every level does something different, but very rarely do these gimmicks ever make sense. A lackluster story that made me dislike Sonic, consistently iffy gameplay mechanics, decent level design with awful gimmicks attached to them, and really uninspired level themes, something that Sonic rarely ever falls victim to. I'm not just gonna say this is a bad game, but an incompetently made game. I find it really hard to believe that after how good and solid Colors and Generations were, the developers thought this game was just perfect to ship out. But for the most part, Sonic Lost World is confused and derivative, and tries far too hard to be clever without any intelligent design to back it up. Even when facing certain doom, I still look good. I'm going to rid this world of all organic life forms and rebuild it piece by robotic piece. Somebody needs a hug. Say something 
didn't you? What I think about Sonic Boom Rise Lyric? Um, I like the box. The cover art is really nice. One minute review! Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Ready, go! Blue Streak speeds by Sonic the Hedgehog Too fast for the naked eye Sonic the Hedgehog Though Sonic Boom being a spunk bubble wasn't a given, I know the character revamp that gave Sonic a Nathan Drake scarf and turned Knuckles into a slow-witted give way sign probably made the fanbase moo a bit, but it made sense to me, at least they're physically differentiating the characters a bit for once. Although I'm not sure what's with all the bandages wrapped around everything, maybe everyone's gotten paper cuts from signing acceptance forms for all the shit they're being given. The third title was developed by two American studios, Big Red Button and Illphonic. And when fans got their first look at the brand new versions of Sonic and Company, it became soberingly clear that something was very, very wrong. This was not classic Sonic. It wasn't even modern Sonic. This was Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric Sonic, and it was aimed squarely at American kids' wallets. Fuck me raw if Sonic Boom didn't fucking happen. After making baby steps toward decency, Sega has Sonic and Chums radically redesigned for a heavily promoted multimedia product, and the result is perhaps the worst Sonic game since the notorious 2006 debacle. At its best, it's mediocre and banal, but it's visually malnourished, littered with glitches, and basically very, very broken. In my review on thegymquisition.com, I said that Sonic Boom reminds me that I'm going to die one day, that I'll die alone, and that it won't matter when I die. It's that cocking miserable. It didn't take long for Sonic Boom to be confirmed as a financial and critical flop, and somehow it managed to become the lowest reviewed Sonic game of all time. Think about that. In a world where Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 exists, it did worse. I think everyone said their piece. I don't think I need to go into a whole tirade. Everything you've heard true. Bounce pads. It's not a Sonic video game. It's a video game that just happens to have Sonic in it. Pretty quickly after turning on Sonic Boom for the first time, one thing became crystal clear. This game thinks that I'm an absolute idiot. This game may be for the kids, but even kids deserve to be treated with some goddamn respect. It appears to be a dead end. I wonder if Ava will pick anything up. And on top of that, as the game creates its own identity, it can't seem to choose between embracing Sonic's past or completely ignoring it. Over the weekend, an associate asked me what kind of game Sonic Boom was, and you know what, as I opened my mouth in a shower of angry spittle and rum, I realised I had no idea how to answer that question. Well, if I'm playing what's being sold to me as a Sonic game, spin-off or otherwise, without the ability to go fast when I desire, then what's the fucking point of playing a Sonic game? You know, I'd like to think that the reason the music and the visuals are so subpar is because the developers spent the majority of their time on the game's performance. It's pretty hard to get into Sonic Boom when every time the game stutters, you have to wait and see if this is it. Is this the moment that the game finally decides to die on you? He can really move. Sonic, he's got an attitude. Dead. Graphics are kind of meh. The storyline is meh. Bounce pads. And you don't mess with it because you know it's just a product that was cheaply and quickly made to promote the television show or movie or cartoon it's attached to. That's what this is. One of Sonic's random witticisms for picking up rings is, can never have enough rings, and somehow he says it with a straight face. Not that it matters, since even if you die, you're just spawn exactly where you were with 23 rings. Challenge must have gotten shunted down the priority list to pay for the voice actor's humiliation insurance. So again, what kind of game is this? A racer? A brawler? A platformer? A gather thing? Things for Twatzer, action adventure, you'd need either action or adventure for that. No, I know what it is, it's an endurance test. You the figurative cherry on top is the frequent graphical hiccups and jittery frame rate. This shit chugs during the mock speed sections and stutters outright when loading other areas in the hub world. The gang accidentally awakens an evil snake man in a robot suit named Lyric, who's hell-bent on destroying all organic life on Earth 
with his robot army. The gang head into a new area, find the crystal, and then it's off to the next place. No transitions or anything like that. There's no world building, no significant character development. Shadow is here for about five minutes total for some reason, and after about eight hours, the game just ends. I would say this story is even more one note than Sonic Lost World. How do you do that? Aside from some amusing time travel elements, it's the type of uninspired narrative that you'd expect from a Sonic game. It's a brand new world for Sonic, but they give no context or origin for anything other than Lyric being an evil prick, something that was already established on the initial meetup. How did Sonic and Tails meet in this universe? What's Shadow's beef? What's the deal with Eggman? Not a damn thing. If they're trying to find a new market with Sonic Boom, this doesn't do a good job at all explaining shit. Why is this game the way it is? What happened here? Was it troubled development? How frantic was the production schedule for this? They wanted to make something different, but their means of doing so was via subtraction, design, core mechanics, appeal. Everything feels lesser here. I can't in good faith recommend Rise of Lyric to anyone. Every Sonic game to an extent has been designed for the younger crowd, and I know there are some kids who will eat this shit up but kids deserve better than this sonic boom should have been a relatively simple challenge but its shoddy gameplay and many bugs turn it into a monumental task that overshadows any good qualities it may otherwise have king he's the fastest thing alive he's the fastest thing alive oh, he's the fastest thing Alive. It has bounce pads. Two out of ten. Are we doing Sonic 4 Episode 3? Right now, give one <gasps> Christian Whitehead, that's good, that's good. He's a Sonic CD creator uh, that did the new Sonic CD. Stay Where is calm, it? Stay calm, everybody. Stay calm. We're almost there, I promise. We are almost there. Stay calm, everybody. Stay calm. We're almost there. I oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! 2D Sonic Returns! Oh my god! You got Tails, you got Knuckles! Who are all these people? It's 2D! So good! Just let that sink in. It took 23 years for Sonic fans to finally, finally receive the game they've been waiting for 
since 1994. At last, Sonic Mania has arrived. As far as platformers went, there was nothing else I was looking forward to as much as this for plenty of reasons besides being what I considered a true follow-up to some of my favorite games of all time on the Genesis. I went into it a bit when I made that reaction video last year, but just to quickly bring it up again, my faith was very strong in this one. Every Sonic fan in the world turned into, well for a lack of a better term, maniacs when they saw that Sega was finally going back to Sonic's 2D roots, not like Sonic 4, not like Sonic Generations, not like Sonic Lost World, no. This was the real deal. Sonic Mania exceeds expectations of what a new game in the franchise can play and look like, managing to simultaneously be a charming celebration of the past and a natural progression of the series' classic 2D formula. Zipping around and collecting rings is still stupidly fun. There are always many opportunities to blast forward and run around all these crazy ramps and stuff, and it's much more thrilling than I remembered. The game does a good job of mixing the slower parts with the fast ones, of requiring precise platforming while making sure to keep the adrenaline up. And while on the topic of level design, I think it would be a good place to bring up the controversial topic of old zones returning in this game. Yes, classic zones do return in this game, Yes, I would have preferred original zones any day, but Sonic Mania did this execution perfectly with the old zones. The level design overall is thoroughly impressive, and the sheer number of different paths to take and secrets to find is almost overwhelming. Each stage has its own set of baddies and its own mechanics, and by drawing on so many games as well as tossing new stuff into the mix, they were able to make each location remarkably unique. The result is an experience that always kept me moving forward, always wanting to see just one more level. On top of Sonic Mania's fantastic presentation, the game also controls like a classic style Sonic game. You have the option to play as Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles. From the get-go, the movement, physics, and overall feel of each character are distinct yet familiar, staying faithful to the originals. This sexy beast had already composed some music for Pagoda West games, and was chosen to help create the soundtrack for Sonic Mania. This work is fantastic. Altogether, we had a collective team of developers and designers who grew up with Sonic the Hedgehog and throughout years of fan hacks and community projects, knew the inner machinations of making a Sonic game. A Sonic game by fans, for fans. By the Mania, for the Mania, as they say, which doesn't make any sense to me, I'm sorry. Every single aspect of this game was lovingly recreated and crafted, and I think it's easy to say that this is simply the best 2D Sonic experience ever made. As a whole, Sonic Mania is a fantastic blast to the past. With amazing level design and kick-ass music, it is truly an experience many old-school Sonic fans have been wanting for many years. In excellent 2D platformer, Sonic Mania goes beyond expectations, managing to not only be a proper evolution of the series' iconic formula, but the best Sonic game ever made. today is that you will be able to customize your own character in Sonic Forces. That is probably a first. 
Um, I, I never knew they were gonna go with this approach, but this is actually really cool. Something caught my eye when I decided to uh, read what they said on Twitter, and it says this. Supersonic is now free to download in Sonic Forces for the next month. Your ears are not tricking you? They expect, after a month, Supersonic will no longer be free. They want you to pay out of pocket. Granted, I know people have been speculating that it might be uh, one ninety nine, two bucks, three bucks. Personally, I don't give a damn whether it's twenty five cents. I would just fucking hate how you would have to buy something that should be an unlockable that has been an unlockable since Sonic fucking two, you know, and in the three D games case since Colors. It's just an invincibility skin. Modern Sonic just gets an unlimited amount of boost and gets a yellow coat of skin. Hey everyone, Derek here with a quick news update on Sonic Forces. As the Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter has updated that the game will no longer charge for the Super Sonic DLC. It's going to be free forever. Previously, Sega had announced that they would be charging $2 in order to access Supersonic within the game, and that left a lot of people confused and angry because, well, they're charging for Supersonic, something that's always been unlockable in the main game, and it just kinda seemed odd that it wasn't there at all, even in the final boss. What's this? All the classic villains return? Metal Sonic? Shadow? Chaos? The red guy from Cow and Chicken? And apparently they are led by a mysterious new villain known as Infinite. Just looking at his design with his badass metal mask, I bet this game is gonna be amazing! No, it wasn't. When Sonic Forces was released, it was met with disappointment and hate from the community. However, the majority of the fans and the critics' final verdict on the game was that it was very much just <laughs> average. There was nothing too terrible about the game, and there's nothing too great about the game. And we have Sonic Forces, which could have been an amazing return to form in the storytelling since we were promised a threatening new villain with a great design, a brand new vocal theme, and a dramatic hook as the heroes have to retake the world that's currently in ruins. But as I watched these cutscenes, I sighed in disappointment, tearing my games off the shelf like I'm Patchy the freaking Pirate. Shadow infiltrated Eggman's facility in Mystic Jungle, where he completely wiped out Squad Jackal, a squad that was working for Eggman at the time. The captain of the squad was ordered to confront Shadow. Unsurprisingly, he gets his ass utterly handed to him by Shadow, leaving him having a mental breakdown. No, I am not weak. I'm... I'm not... I'm not weak. I am not weak! Ah! <laughs> Man... You are one pathetic loser. Just as Sonic's about to boot Eggman away for the 80th time, Shadow, Metal Sonic, Chaos, and Zabok show up out of nowhere. With no trouble at all, Sonic gets his ass completely handed to him as Tails decides not to jump in and help, as he was busy playing Super Mario Odyssey on his Nintendo Switch in the background. As the game from an animation and writing standpoint continued to squander every opportunity they had, Infinite was a brand new and original villain, but he just stands around and acts evil when they could have finally done something interesting with the reveal of his true identity instead of revealing him to be some guy who got upset in the free DLC pack. The other characters could finally step up to the plate and do something for once since none of them have done anything since 2006! But no, they just huddle around praying for Sonic and classic Sonic to do something when all of them totally could and would have made for some cool levels. What? Ah, the Sonic Mania theme. To remind you, this is a cash grab. Wait, 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 did you just say from another dimension? Really? That's the excuse we're going with? The Phantom Ruby just so happened to send Classic Sonic to this dimension because everything happens for a reason? And no, can, can we just back up for a bit? It's never explained how Classic Sonic is suddenly from another dimension. It's not like the timeline got split after Sonic met his past self, no, because even Sonic just acts like it's always been this way. 
This retcon is really dumb, and serves to lazily split the canon in two just for us to get more classic style games in the future. Sega still decided to keep the same writers, and one thing that these writers absolutely suck at is keeping one consistent tone with the story. Something you will notice in Sonic Forces is the annoying, cowardly behavior from the writers. The writers will throw an idea into the story and then back down when it's time to execute. And despite being hellishly tormented for six months, Sonic X perfectly fine in this cutscene. Ha! The only thing inevitable here is my foot kicking your butt! The infinite beats Silver, but before he can deal with the finishing blow, Sonic hops in. But then he's defeated by Infinite again, this time without the help of the other villains. Looks like this is it for our hero. After all these years, Sonic's finally... You're not even worth the effort to finish off. What? Sonic is baffled that Shadow was a fake all along, despite clearly seeing a fake Zavok earlier. Dipstick. I swear, with each game, Sonic becomes less aware of what's going on. He just shows up, Sonic says hi, and that's it. He doesn't ever get talked to until the game's ending. The general feeling I get from classic Sonic is forced. Suddenly, and conveniently, Yoroshi still has the Phantom Ruby prototype, which can somehow make the sun disappear? Look, if the writers didn't put much thought into it, neither should I. Omega shoots gun at infinite, and then Sonic and the rookie tussle with the jackal one last time before he leaves. Bye bye infinite, he was never seen again. On the other hand, I love Infinite's voice, and that's mainly thanks to Liam O'Brien, his voice actor. He makes him some imposing, threatening, but still being cool and badass. Eggman then incorporated the Phantom Ruby into this Death Egg robot to become the ultimate form. Long story short, Classic Sonic, Modern Sonic, and your avatar go head to head with Eggman, ending in the Doctor's defeat hence putting an end to his reign of terror as the virtual reality enemies disappear. Classic Sonic is transported back to his world, and Tails is acting a little too emotional over it. Sonic Forces actually wasn't developed for four years, or at least the game itself. So there is a lot of uh, misconception, at least now that we have this new information, that Sonic Forces was a game that was in the making for four years, and a lot of people are like, Really? This is what we got? This game took four years to make? Well, apparently the actual development of the game itself and everything within the game only took about a year. So the first thing to talk about is the new lighting engine. After all, it took them three years to develop this lighting engine. It has to be impressive, right? Sorry, but I'm not impressed by this lighting engine. Not only not being impressed, I also think it looks worse than the previous games. Sonic Forces was shaped enough to be something else. Eventually, more levels were shown, and they didn't impress me at all. Not only were most of them blatant callbacks to overused zones, they simply lacked interesting looking level design. Wow, imagine the possibilities they could have designed for this level, let's... Double boost, I guess. What amazing level design could they have incorporated here? I'm interested to see what they have. Or get rid of it 20 seconds later. To go back to Unleashed, that game has the benefit of having small hub worlds where you can get to know the inhabitants of each nation, and see them traveling to and fro as you fix the planet. You'll see someone from one country wanting to travel to another, but because of the broken planet they can't, but then you fix it and they go and achieve their dreams. It's awesome, it feels like I'm progressing. But Forces doesn't have that. We're told information, instead of the game having us seek out and do it for ourselves. I'm sorry, but it seriously took you three years to develop this? Sega, if you spent that time actually making the game instead of making it in the last year of development, we could have actually had one of the best Sonic games ever made. The first one, Lost Valley. While I did criticize this level earlier, it at least shows some sort of narrative progression, even if poorly. Teals tells you you're needed in the city, and you travel through progressively decaying green hills over before Sonic says, Alright, I'm going to the city now. It's, uh, it's, um... It's there, I guess. If we're gonna go back to that comment I made about Sonic Forces feeling like it's on autopilot, I wasn't just talking about the story. Also, unlike the previous boosting titles, Sonic Forces, instead of having you dodge a jump and platform with obstacles in your way, they just have you run in a straight line. If you aren't rail grinding, you're running through crowds of enemies with zero effort needed. 
I won't sugarcoat it, this Sonic feels incredibly naked. No drifting, no air dash, no wall jumping, little enemy variety, set pieces that are related to quick time events, and generally slower boosting. Not only that, but boost power is once again given by white wisps, meaning there's less of it. The boost formula has been brought back, bringing the fast paced thrills we've known since Sonic Unleashed, but the level design rarely takes full advantage of it. When you're not running on a straight line through hordes of bad guys that serves as nothing more than boost fodder, you're going through a ton of automated sequences that require little player input. What makes the sections even worse is that you don't even do the turning, the game does that for you. You can't be trusted to move the left analog stick all by yourself. Now get back here and finish this Happy Meal, you spoiled piece of sh- Why don't you just make me a sandwich and do my taxes while you're at it? The 2D sections have it a bit worse. I don't know what happened here, but it feels like they overtuned Sonic's control. 0 to 100 at the drop of a dime, and his jumps feel so heavy. He sort of has this double jump from Colors and Lost World, but it's so minuscule in effectiveness it's practically worthless. Too many times I screwed up what should have been simple jumps in previous games, only for me to either slip off the edge because of my speed or miss the jump entirely, given how much weight Sonic has. Modern Sonic's levels are filled to the brim with boost pads that keep you from straying off a set path. And sometimes if it's a boosting section when you don't really have control, it's still possible to fly off the screen and die. Why doesn't Modern Sonic just stick to 3D and leave Classic Sonic to the 2D bits? I feel like Modern Sonic having 2D sections is just kind of redundant. Another issue with this game is how short the levels are. When completing a boosting level for the first time, it should take you 3-5 to five minutes. When a casual experienced player completes a boosting level, it should take you around one to three minutes. In Sonic Forces, however, these games are done two minutes, baby. That's right, two minutes, baby. Gotta go fast. Sonic's actual running control when he's not boosting feels worse than it did before. It has the same problem of unpredictability that the jumps seem to have. I don't have a well-tuned grasp on Sonic's acceleration. I just play and hope the level catches me when I jump. Playing as the Avatar feels kind of like modern Sonic without a boost. But you have this grappling hook, which is pretty much just a homing attack, but it doesn't feel nearly as satisfying. As for the Avatar's levels, they're decently designed for the most part. The levels have some alternate pathways and areas designed specifically for whatever wisp bond you have equipped. The wisp bonds themselves, however, are kind of hit or miss. So it should go without saying that I enjoy the concept of this character. In fact, one thing I immensely appreciate is the effort at making a character who feels like Sonic but with their own ability to act as a foil to Sonic's boosting. This can give the levels some value of replayability, but I feel like this could have been flushed out way better in level design around these abilities. Your avatar character has all the abilities unlocked from the get-go. 
and any sort of perk that later Wispawn levels get is unneeded at best and detrimental at worst. Like how when you land sometimes your character will just sprint off in the distance off a cliff, like that's, that's not an upgrade Sega. But I can still play through the levels just fine without them. I don't have any sort of issue and the Wispawns have infinite ammo, so I seem to be plowing through robots no problem. And whenever something cool happens on screen, you're not playing the game, you're watching a movie. Most of these cool looking sequences require you to tap the action button like a QTE, but these are just a joke. Most of them don't even penalize you if you mess up. The lack of wisp and variety combined with the awkward controls and frankly no attempts at combat leave the avatar feeling very underdeveloped. You get the feeling they really wanted to do more of the idea, but something went wrong. Something else that's wrong with the rookie's gameplay is that he has these double boost moments with modern Sonic that last a while and they're only here to make the level take longer. It's like they had to make the levels longer because they weren't ready to release the game. It doesn't matter what obstacles they put in our way, we'll blow past everything they throw at us. Double boost! Yeah, that's how it's done! We've got unstoppable speed and timing! You just have to keep this up! Bingo! Found a way in! You should be able to get into the factory through there! Stay alert! <laughs> this should be fun! In classic Sonic's gameplay, he plays the same classic Sonic from Sonic Generations, but they somehow managed to make it worse. Classic Sonic. Well, this ain't no Sonic Mania, that's for fucking sure. It isn't even Classic Sonic from Generations. You got the occasional shield, power sneakers, and invincibility, but elemental shields are completely gone, and not much is given to the player for exploring. And I really don't feel encouraged to do so. And if you thought Modern Sonic was heavy, Classic Sonic feels like a five-ton weight with a drop dash. His gameplay is the worst part of this game. His control is atrocious. For some reason, his jump feels too floaty but heavy at the same time? Like, how do you do that? Most of the stages are over before you know it. It's kind of like Sonic Colors, a game that also had its share of super short stages, but in Forces, stages end before it feels like they really have a chance to take off. Just when I start to get invested, the stage just straight up fucking ends, and that's just deflating. Especially when a stage has the rare exciting set piece. Oh yeah, here we go, grinding rails and space and shit, and oh, well, fuck. So the music is a mixed bag. If I were to simplify it into a tier-based system, I'd give Classic Sonic's music a D, Sonic's music a C, and the Avatar's music an A. Back before when this game came out, the amount of hype that the fanbase had was crazy. We had just got done with the Sonic Boom shenanigans, and we're finally back to where we belong, with the ambitious and insane modern Sonic titles that we were used to. I mean, we absolutely had everything. This game looked like it was gonna go down in history for being such an ambitious and overwhelming game. In the end, you have to wonder, why did the game come out like this? Did Sega always have the intentions of making a $40 title? Don't get me wrong, I think the game was priced well, but I don't want a $40 experience. I want a $60 experience that is given to us with love, and sadly, I didn't get that feeling with this game. Sonic Forces is a perfectly average game, and one that I have perfectly average feelings towards. I see why the game's only 40 bucks now, but why is it like this? It's amazing how a game can feel so bloated and attempt to tackle so many ideas and still feel completely distilled, empty, and void of content. They want to tell a big story with as little effort as possible. Even simple things like Sonic's animations are reduced to standing there, and one homing attack recoil that looks like he's more so struggling with the blowback than handling it with style like in other games. I saw a picture floating around online, then it hit me as to why this game came out the way it was. I want you guys to look at this picture from the credits. There were only three people that designed the levels for this game. Three. And to add fuel to the fire, after doing some research, it turns out that the two level designers never worked on a Sonic game before. Are you serious? We had Shadow, Chaos, Metal Sonic, Zavok, and the mysterious villain that is infinite. Everything was so overwhelming, it's like they threw every awesome idea into one game and that was supposed to be our game. But when this game got released, we got the mediocre at best game, but in my opinion, is an absolutely terrible Sonic game. But even worse than that, is that Sega lied to us about everything. There was no Chaos or Shadow boss fight. The team who made Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations did not make this game. 
It's crazy how many lies were put into the advertising of this game. It's also kind of sad, as you may know, this game was made in under a year. Where's the evolution? Why can't Sonic have a game to the degree of Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey? It sucks that this franchise is all about, okay, how can we make this game like these really old titles? Old games should be used to inspire new ideas and evolve concepts that worked. And get this, the lead level designer only worked on Lost World. Lost World. Who made this decision? What idiot let newbies take control of one of the most important part of any Sonic game? Now I got a question for you, Sega. What part of those teams worked on Sonic Forces? What was it? Was it that they had the same janitor? Is that what warranted putting this in the trailer for us to trust you? As far as I'm concerned, you lied to us. You lied to the only people that were ever loyal to you to get more sales. And until I hear otherwise, that is probably one of the most scummiest things I've ever seen any game company do.